Yeah. All right, it's Dev, the gear whore, here again. Actually, I'm only a gear whore for certain things. And uh, once they have hit that threshold of, of suitable studio awesomeness, then I have no choice but to show you how I use them. Because, hey, it keeps them happy and it keeps me in gear. Because I'm a gear whore. All right. Gear whore! Gear whore! Gear whore! All right, so the Axfix is uh, a digital modeling guitar uh, solution which provides basically a blank slate for you to do whatever you want in your guitar world. I have been using Axfix for maybe about eight years now, and the learning curve on it is significant, and specifically so when I started with the, um, the Ultra. But now that uh, it's got this, this uh, editor that I'll be showing you here, uh, it's a lot more user-friendly than I had actually realized. Might as well just dig in because uh, if you're not familiar with it, uh, it's it's hard to explain in any other way. So you see up on the screen here, you've got all these little blocks, right? This sort of gives you a virtual matrix, uh, and these little lines here act as like virtual cables, and you can do essentially whatever you want. So you could. For example, you right-click in this box, and you can add any of these things. Amps, choruses, like whatever. There's so much stuff in here. And it's all really well done. The processing power of the Axe Effects is, is something else. But for the sake of just putting together this sound, I'll show you what I did. I, I put a, an amp here, and I put a cab here, delay here, and then um, an overdrive here. So if you start with the amp... You see all these parameters down here, as deep as you want to go in any of these things, you can go, right? You can go to the graph equalizer and you can change the type of graphic equalizer you have. In your preamp, you can change tone stack preamp tubes. And this uh, processor is so advanced that each firmware update they provide, it just keeps getting closer and closer to blurring the lines between digital and and, uh, and like a real tube amp. Um, at first, the uh, those updates used to make me crazy because I'd get my sound and then I'd have to change it and blah, 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 blah. But it's certainly now, years later, gotten to the point where every time they've released a firmware, it just keeps getting better and better and better. So, you know, you can go through, and for those of you who want to mess around with this sort of stuff, you can. I tend to stay out of the deep parameters for these these amps there the presets are are more thought out than i would be able to do and then for your if you, you could choose your amp for example you you hit this and see all these they're all different amps right just unbelievable amounts of stuff that you can choose from so live i use this and in the studio i use this and this app i kind of keep going at the same time as I've got my DAW open, whatever, you know, I got Pro Tools rolling here. And then this sort of goes on another screen and I can create sounds on the go or, or reamp them. And I've got it plugged in through AES on the back, which provides me a really clean digital signal to record as well. But say you wanted to choose your cab, you see you go here, there's different types of cabs. You can change the amount of room or air or the air frequency and... Blah, blah, blah. And all this stuff gets really overwhelming because a lot of times you get lost in the options, right? But say here's a... I've chosen this kind of 5150 style amp. But say I wanted to, for a heavy sound, go and, and experiment with one of the, you know, the rectifier types. So, look, there's all sorts of that stuff, right? And, I don't know, fire two, right? <laughs> Then you can change the types of cabinets that you use, you know, the rectifier cabinet with a 57 on it, or you can change the microphones to, to go with the one that is um, default with that. Or... And you can make terrible sounds if you're, if you're haphazardly clicking like I am doing here. So basically, check it out. So say if we wanted to do... We get a heavy sound, and then I'm like, okay, well, I want to add a reverb at the end of that. Is that just essentially a, other pedals? Yeah, or but it, where you put them in this chain, so you could do like a, you could do that and then send that to an effects loop. 
You know what I mean? And It'd be then, exactly what kind of what you do with your board, like your right, pedal yeah. board. That's it's it is that. It's a virtual guitar rig, and anything that you want to do with it, like you see up in the, the top corner here where the CPU is at 57%, yeah. once you get to the point where you're maxing it out, then that's where your limitations go. But it's such a blank slate that it it really requires you to be precise in, in terms of articulating what you want, but then once you're able to or do that... Or like you can experiment like to your heart's content oh yeah come up with like we well, get lost thing. you get lost like i spent a year pissing around with it <laughs> and then at the end of it, it's like i don't like what i've done so now that i'm like okay i know what i want i know the type of amp i'm looking for i know the type of cab that i want to get now it's it's a lot more streamlined but anything that you want to do is you, your tuners and your tap tempos all of which are assignable these scenes here so basically you can assign within the parameters of say you wanted to have uh this 5150 on my X, and then when I go to the Y, I want it to switch over to a basement or something, right? Is it uh, level down? Is that what it is? Or you could just not. That could work too. You could just be like, whatever. There we go. So, so say we did that, and then we make that. So you can have, uh, there's a bit of a latency right now because I'm running USB through the computer, but with these scenes, what you can do is, uh, in order to maximize your CPU usage, you could have each one of these effects roll on an X and a Y. So in one scene, it's X is the, the JVM, or the Y is the JVM, and the X is the 5153. And that way you've got several effects going without taxing your CPU because it only accesses uh, those things one at a time. My point being is just it's it's whatever you want to do you can do. So you know now I've got this kind of sound and I let's put a big reverb on it for example. You go down to your reverbs and there's tons of a deep space. Why would you not want to be in deep space? Well, I certainly would. <laughs> let's go lots of seconds. <laughs> right. <laughs> this here has that modifier you could set that to any one of these pedals you can set it to the different scenes to the external foot pedals to a, an envelope to a, an LFO and then you could have the that whatever it is control in this situation the amount of time that that reverb is going to go for and you could do something just you know just crazy like you could have that reverb going into I don't know like a synth and then mix a synth back into the real line here by, you know. hitting the uh, button with the headstock but that's an extreme example of yeah you just kind of like go for it and then and then and then you come up with all these crazy sounds like that's that's fun if that's what you want to do but it's a big investment axe effect so I would suggest that if you're looking into this unit uh, you're using it for a real specific reason and I use the Axe in a ton of different ways. Like I'll use it alongside like a vintage tube amp. Not because I don't like the models, but just I want to use a vintage tube amp. So I'll run an AB pedal. One side goes into the Axe one side goes into the, the tube amp, and then I mix the two. Or, uh, you know, I started using this new uh, John Petrucci head by Mesa recently. Hey! And um, I put that in the effects loop, and then I control the patch changes within the Petrucci amp, through the fractal pedal board, and on and on and on. Luckily for me, my my world is limited to five sounds, five basic sounds. And then uh, within the parameters of those five sounds, 
I have things that come off and on and, and like an auto engage for the wah or like the volume pedal is is post amp so I can do a, a gradual fade out of the entire thing. All these things are possible and more, but it again really uh, is important in my experience to define what it is that you're looking for or else you'll just be fucking around with it for for years, right? Which is what I did. But uh, now that I know it, and now that it's gotten to the point where the sounds just keep getting better and better and better, it's it's uh, it's now completely indispensable. Damn you, Fractal. And Matt Picone from Fractal is a gentleman and a skull. Anyway, that's it. Gear whoring it out for Fractal Axe Effects 2 XL Plus. Now suck it.